You know what that sound means. It's time for Stay Diapered. <laughs> Hello, friends. This is Riley Kilo. It is the morning of April 26th, 2022, and I'm trying something new today. Uh, I just have some things I'd really like to talk about, and I'd like to get them out quickly and discuss them, so I'm just going to sit in front of this microphone for 10 minutes and tell you what's on my mind. So this might be called a podcast or evolve into something else, but just for today, I'd like to just get some thoughts out. So are you ready? Okay, here we go. So I recently got all diapered up in a blue North Shore and went to the PA Cannabis Festival. If you've been following my Twitter, there's some pretty cute pics there. And I'm going to be working on a video talking all about that, as well as uh, I have a couple really big projects right now that are kind of in the developing phase. Uh, I have one on mutual aid scams that I start seeing around the you know LGBT community. LGBT community, etc., as well as um, a project about somebody in the ABDL community who is really doing, I think, some harm as well as they have a position at a pride parade, despite them being kind of a, uh, what I would describe as a right-wing troll. So uh, th these stories are kind of, uh, I don't want to release this stuff early because I don't want to have to keep updating it and stuff and I'm trying to kind of be responsible about some of these issues and really see the full picture and sometimes that takes a little bit of time so I have been working a lot on these projects and I assure you they will see the light of day if you've been following my patreon um, or my blog you probably have seen the mutual aid video that's still kind of a uh, limited release right now but um, outside of that uh, I just have some fun stuff too uh, I've been trying to tackle both. Uh, I, I've been just working on Stay Kinky uh, for the last two years almost exclusively. I've been doing, you know, a lot of ABDL videos and stuff too, um, but really my main focus has been the weekly Stay Kinky videos. So that's been uh, my job and uh, my livelihood and everything. And so now that I'm starting to have a lot more energy and, and, and some more um, kind of uh, efficiency in what I do, um, I'm starting to be able to branch out and start doing some more of these kind of journalistic things um, that don't involve my ass uh, and uh, things that are a little bit more fulfilling and I think that are kind of intended to help the community and stuff instead of just kind of focusing on um, my survival, which is also valid, but, you know, of course I need to pay the bills and everything, but um, <clears throat> I always see it as stay kinky is kind of my job where uh, the ABDL stuff is kind of my hobby and my passion and stuff like that, um, even though I do have a lot of passion for my kink work and stuff too. So anyway, um, so to get that out of the way, there's a lot of really exciting stuff coming up on staydiaper.com as well as on my Patreon and some of the um, stuff that's going to be coming out on um, a long defunct site, my transcaping slash let's get SRS stuff. Um, I've been mostly, again, focusing on things that are in the kink adult stuff and right now there's a, a big need for voices in the trans community that can thoughtfully express how important it is um, that we retain our solidarity and fight back against these bills and stuff like that so um, I need to take some time writing about those things. Now I generally stay out of the limelight as a trans person because I do have quite a bit of baggage you know I have this ABDL stuff and I was on TV and um you know, it's easy to kind of come at me and, and call me things. And uh, and granted, that doesn't change the legitimacy of my argument or anything, but it's, uh, it's just kind of important for me to uh, be thoughtful when it comes to how I represent myself in the media and stuff, uh, when it comes to writing articles and stuff, because the last thing transgender people need right now is more implication that we're related in any way to pedophilia or anything like that. And I know ABDL isn't that. I try to demystify things, but it just doesn't help. It wouldn't help if I went on CNN or something like that and was talking about trans issues because I do have this thing that is so misunderstood as an interest. So um, granted, this is me just being kind of maybe overly thoughtful at points, but I'm, I just want to be, I want to have a lot of educational materials out there and I want to be in the right position um, before I start entering kind of more the mainstream advocacy scene. I want there to be uh, a, a long track record of like, here's my positions on uh, 
the 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 stigma around ABDL and the misconceptions around ABDL and stuff like that. So um, anyway, I could go on and on about this stuff, but really the point of this post is to talk about this uh, really wonderful experience I had uh, on Instagram, and so let's uh, let's talk about that. So. Uh, I just wanted to get all that stuff out of the way about my blog. Lots of exciting things coming. And to everybody who supports my Patreon, I really want to send the biggest hugs and heartfelt loves and everything because um, it's just wonderful to know that people are enjoying my content and uh, helping lift me up so I can share my views and stuff. And I want to I wanna pay you back uh, in every way by making great content that is supportive and positive and uh, all that good stuff. So, yay! So today I'd like to talk about a microscopic little interaction that had big ramifications for my self-esteem and I just wanted to kind of share this revelation with you and um, it may make me sound a little weird but uh, I'm comfortable with that. So uh, here we go. Um, so ever since I was little I was involved in acting and stuff like that and I always kind of thought I was going to get famous. I wanted to be a preacher when I was really little, and then I wanted to be a magician, and then I wanted to be an actress. And so uh, I did a lot of acting as a kid and commercial acting and stuff and training videos and stuff like that, and uh, did a little bit of bit parts and stuff in movies. And eventually uh, I started to get into kind of more mature acting, and through that I joined a group called the Sacramento Film Group. Ever since I was young, I knew that I liked diapers, and I knew that I was different, and I knew that I was always going to be kind of hiding something behind my eyes, and uh, through that, I always was cautious about social situations in the sense that um, that kind of imp imposter syndrome or the idea that you just don't belong anywhere, and I've, I still have that to this day where I just don't really feel like I have a place or, or have anybody that I could relate to, but um, the idea of being able to go into a group and just give somebody a hug and, and be who I wanted to be, um, like like everybody else was, you know, um, seemed out of reach for me. And uh, so joining this film group around 13 or 14, I really had that revelation. I remember very specifically staying up so many nights thinking to myself, well, you know, I, if I'm wearing a bra or something and somebody gives me a hug, they're going to know about it or or, or um, wearing a diaper or uh, or just being trans, people aren't going to want to associate with me or, or think that I'm some sort of predator or, or, or just in general think that I am not worthy of touching or being around or, or, or communicating with. And for me, a lot of it, was quantified in hugs in the sense that that was, you know, kind of how film people communicated is you'd come up and you'd give somebody a hug and maybe peck on the cheek or whatever. And so, you know, even as a young person, that was kind of something you did. And later I found out that was often because there's a lot of predators in the film industry, but that's here nor there. Um, but not to focus on the negative, artists are just touchy-feely sometimes. And uh, there were a lot of good people there. And I ended up working at that theater for many, many years afterwards. Uh, but, you know, my mom had just dropped me off at this little group at 13 years old, and I was being treated like an adult by other adults, and uh, I was very, very little for my age, uh, and I was a bit of a late bloomer, so I had this kind of big brain, but I was very small, and so uh, I, you know, and had all this acting experience, which not a lot of people my age did, and so uh, I felt really comfortable there, but there was just this kind of overlying crowd, cloud of worry that I just wouldn't be able to be accepted for who I was, uh, and that you know, any sort of interaction would lead to kind of outing. And I just, you know, maybe it was better if I just hid and did nothing and, and um, just didn't talk or express myself at all. And we all know that's not true, but that's kind of the way I felt. So let's flash forward to a couple days ago. So in this group, there was one particular person that was very wonderful and uh, we became friends later on and I went to some parties and all that kind of stuff and we were never really close but they were just somebody that I always thought was really cool and they were kind of, they were tall and pretty but also kind of fun and funny and they were really the kind of woman I saw myself growing up to be and uh, they uh, have gone on to do some really cool acting and stuff and, and they uh, 
are probably more famous than me and stuff like that. But anyway, it was just really cool um, uh, to have this person to kind of look up to. And um, so long story short, we uh, kind of remained friends and stuff, uh, you know, not again, not really close. And I moved out of Sacramento uh, nearly 15 years ago. So it's been a long time since I've been part of that scene and stuff. So uh, I looked her up on Instagram a while back and uh, we kind of were friends on there and I was commenting on some stuff and everything. And it was just kind of nice to see some good old Southern California and Northern California memories and everything. But, um, you know, I'm always a little shy talking to normal people and people that I know from my past lives and stuff that aren't involved in ABDL stuff or anything because, you know, my Instagram is mostly pictures of me wearing diapers. And so I know some of my old friends and stuff follow me and everything, and uh, but I never know how they really feel about it. And I'm always still a little shy of it. I'm still from that generation that is kind of shy of talking about certain things like sex and weed and stuff like that because it was so taboo for so long that, you know, that you hear young people talking so much about it. And, you know, I'm still kind of shy. I'm a sex worker and I'm kind of shy talking about sex work uh, around just kind of average people. And so um, when I say average people and earlier I said normal people, um, that is a, a awful generalization I make because nobody's normal. Everybody's very strange, but just kind of the idea of people that are not within the ABDL community that may not be ABDL aware or whatever, because um, I can tell you one thing about my friend and a lot of my friends, uh, they're not normal. That, nobody I know is normal. And really, frankly, nobody out there is normal. That, that idea is a myth and uh, we all have our fun little quirks and stuff. So just a little, little momentary uh, lapse of judgment there, but um it's it's hard to avoid that kind of normative language sometimes, but uh, yeah, you know, people who are not EBDL aware. How about that? <laughs> so I'm meandering from the point as I often do, but when I was a kid, I had so much stigma around wearing diapers. I never thought I was going to be able to do it, even in private. And now, 23 years later, one of the people in the group that I was so worried about took a little time out of their day to comment on one of my pictures of me wearing diapers with my stuffies and being cute and everything to say, oh, what a cute picture. So, and you know, that person was just as accepting back then, I'm sure, as they are now. And I realized that so much of my worries about, you know, people not accepting me or, or people not liking me or, or all that sort of thing about just not being accepted for who I am and, and, or even for the things that I choose to do in private, um, you know, is a lot of that's just in my head and that people, you know, people are a lot kinder than you think. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of really wonderful, funky, cool people out there. And, uh, you know, I just never really, never really thought that, you know, again, so many years on that somebody that I kind of looked up to and stuff so much, um, would take the time to kind of, I guess, validate my existence and stuff. And you know me, I don't need other people's approval to, uh, to, uh, be who I want to be and stuff like that. But it is really nice, especially when it was something, you know, very, very deep and personal from when I was a kid like that, something that really stuck with me that, you know, and it, it, it was almost like a delayed reaction too. I saw the post and I went, Oh, that's cool. And then it was just like, Oh, wow. You know, that's really, really cool. So, um, anyway, I just wanted to share this moment of joy with you. And, um, uh, I know it's kind of weird to kind of talk about somebody else like this and stuff, but I just wanted to share some, um, some happiness and let you know that, um, there's, peace to be found out there and there's uh kind wonderful people and sometimes the kind wonderful people uh are unexpected and uh some people uh decide to show their kindness uh at unexpected times or are um uh, even kinder than you think so um anyway uh maybe take a moment to show somebody else that you uh love them, you know, that you think that they're cool and you think that what they're doing is cool and that they're another person on this planet that uh, deserves love and deserves um, to be praised for being themselves and stuff. So um, I think that's such a powerful thing in this world just to, to be yourself and, uh, you know, you can wave flags and go to marches and everything, but just just living and being yourself and, and 
making your own choices is is a very very powerful um way to change the world also so anyway uh i hope you've enjoyed whatever the heck this is uh i don't know if this is going to become anything or uh i just really had a little bug in my diaper this morning and wanted to um get some uh thoughts and ideas out there so uh I promise I'll say, uh, less. I'll promise I'll say I'll be less breathy. I'm really breathy this morning. It's, it's quite cold in here. So, uh, and, uh, there's like a weird buzz in the background. So I'll try to work on that, but, um, yeah, happy thoughts and, uh, more stuff soon. Thanks everybody for watching. And thanks again for everybody who's supporting me on Patreon, as well as on all my adult sites and stuff like that, because, uh, that's how I keep this going. You know, I mean, I'm making, a living uh making this stuff uh so more stuff soon and yeah cool big hugs bye i don't know how to end something like this uh huh. grab that gem <laughs> bye